with the release of EDDS a couple, well, about a month ago now actually, um, one of the videos that's coming up here in a week or two, I started running into the usual issues with traffic routing and some real traffic problems with the game had updated, but I hadn't upgraded some of the mods that I'd been using. So I have been seeing a lot of questions on the forums as well as uh, some of the questions on some of my other videos about installing and operating real traffic in real color. I wanted to go ahead and put a quick video together about that. And I'll be honest, this is the second time I ran through it, I made a bit of a mistake in the previous video and didn't record something properly, so I've got to do a mulligan. So, the first thing you really want to do when you're going to install these things, let's pretend first that you have the game installed. You'll want to go to your add remove programs and uninstall everything. You can uninstall certain components, but I have found that it just does not work properly, so it's easier or just better to reinstall the whole game and then reinstall any mods and add-ons that you have. Now, this works for both the Steam version and the independent version that you buy from Real there through BMT. So it doesn't really matter what order you uninstall these things in, though I have found that if you uninstall Real Traffic first, some of the color and other things that installed aspects within different parts of the system seem to go away anyway and when you go to remove them here it's going to say it's already gone and that's fine you just want to make sure that windows registers that that program is no longer there once you've got your mods uninstalled you can then go and uninstall the game itself so if you have it installed through windows meaning you've downloaded it from bmt or feel there and you've got it installed from the manufacturer developers then you'll probably want to uninstall it through the add remove programs if you purchased it through steam then simply go to your steam library right click the file and go to uninstall delete local content once it is deleted what you will have is in your steam directory you'll have nothing hey and you can then go reinstall the game. Once you reinstall the game, the default game directory will show up like this. At this point, you can now start reinstalling all of the mods and all of the additions and get everything going again. The first one that you want to reinstall is going to be real traffic. So I keep all the old installs for eh, around about a year and then I delete them. I guess I've got to delete a couple of these older ones, but for now, that's fine. So here's the latest install that was updated with EDDS. You can see I got it just about a month ago. I'm going to double click it, going to run it, hit next, next, blah, blah, blah. Then you need to pick the version of Tower 3D that you have. You either have Tower 3D or Tower 3D Pro, which came from the manufacturer. Tower 3D has no voice. Tower 3D Pro has voice. Then you have the same options for Steam. So you have Tower 3D, which has... Uh, voice, or I'm sorry, Tower 3D has no voice and Tower 3D Pro has the voice options. So I have Tower 3D Pro from Steam. Click Next, agree to the terms, and then it's going to ask you to input your information. So I keep all of mine in a simple text file so that it makes copy pasting all this junk easy to do. And it'll fill it out. Da -da 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 -da. Hit next, and once you hit next, this is where a lot of people seem to get confused because it's going to want to install into the base Tower 3D Pro folder. It's going to look for certain directories such as extensions and things, and that's what it's going to try to install. Everything before that needs to be your game directory. So if you installed Tower 3D Pro from the manufacturer, then it's probably under CE Program Files x86 Tower 3D Pro or wherever the heck you put it. It really doesn't matter. Everything before Tower 3D Pro needs to map to your individual installation folder. And then you just leave the back. Now I, in my text document, have just pre-written the directory I have. So you can see, if I go back, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Tower 3D Pro. Let's paste mine again. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Tower 3D Pro. Everything's the same. It's just mapped to my specific installation on my end drive, which is where my games are. And you can see that reflected up here. Games, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Tower 3D Pro. So that's the easiest way to get it done. 
Then you can hit next, it'll go through the installation, and once it's done, it usually takes about a second, you'll get a little pop-up that you just click OK on. Now, I've already done the reinstallation. As I said, this is the second time I've done this video, so I'm not going to go reinstall that one again. But we can come in here and do real color. So here are the real color versions that I have purchased. Um, there, there's plenty of other airports. You don't necessarily have to buy it for every single airport. just depends on how okay you are with some blank white planes. And I'm okay with a couple here and there. So my favorite airports, the airports that really shine or the ones that are really exciting and interesting are the ones that I paid for. Now EDDM, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I have some complaints about it, but I love that one because it's European and I wanted to see all the European planes and everything. So that's why I purchased that one. Now, it doesn't matter. It's the same exact type of setup. So let's just do EDDM, run it. Same start, next, next, pick your version, next, agree, next, input your personal key information that you got. Do, do, do. Let me copy all this over again. And from there, do, do, do. you can click on next. And then once again, you just change everything to match your directory. Now you see Tower 3D Pro extensions, airplanes, texture packs. So if I go under extensions, airplanes, you can see there's the texture packs folder that it's going to be installing. This directory texture packs is the new one that usually doesn't exist when you do it. So just map out the directory to where it is on your computer. If it doesn't exist, create it. That's fine. So you can see I'm going to replace it with mine. Boom, there's texture packs already in the system, ready to go. Hit next, it'll install. You can see it's only a six meg file, so it's really not gonna take long, and you're done. Repeat that process for all of the different things that you have purchased, and you're ready to go. Now, if you've purchased maps from the developer, then you'll have to reinstall the maps. Same process, nothing really changes. It'll install them. If you purchase through Steam, then the game will automatically download the airports that you have purchased and get them in your folder properly ready to go. So it's, for me, a little better if you purchase it through Steam because there's less to worry about. Now, I have some other add-ons, and these are all custom schedules for different airports and different things. So I've got uh, one that I'm playing with, and then some the LAX custom one that I've been playing with on... Uh, that specific airport. So if you go under extensions and airfields, it lists all of the airports that exist in the game. Now, I haven't paid for LGA. This isn't the LGA airport. This is simply the real traffic installation folder for that. So let's go under LAX. Let's pull up uh, the Christmas day one that I'm working on, LAX. You can see here's the default files. So before I copy any of these custom schedules over, I usually try to make a backup of my entire extensions directory. And if I back up, you can see Tower 3D Backup. I've got modded and original, so I back up my updated versions as well as my original. You can see I do real traffic versions, so I keep a backup. There's my extensions, there's my airfields, and here's my original directory. That way, if I would, once I'm done playing a specific airfield under a modded schedule, I can drag the original back in, or I can just replace what was there with another schedule and have some more fun. If you're trying to troubleshoot some schedule issues, then this can kind of help, um, but it's always a good idea just to create a backup of it. Under modded, once I've installed all of the schedules that I want to play, I make a backup of my modded version as well, just in case, just makes it easier. Especially like right now, where I'm in the middle of working on multiple different videos for multiple different airports, playing custom schedules kind of across the board, Doing it this way means that I don't really have to worry about copying each individual file over. Real traffic doesn't change that much. It's just the way the airplanes operate in a couple minor coding functions, as well as another airport getting added, such as EDDS, which I don't have, so it doesn't matter. All I'm copying back over are changed schedules. I'm not actually copying over game data, so I'm just replacing these schedules with the custom ones. So it makes it really easy to reinstall all of that once you do it. So I was do, 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 under LAX, let's do the Christmas day one, LAX. To replace it, you simply copy the new files from the custom schedule and paste them on top of the original information from that airport. Just make sure you copy the right airport into the right airport, otherwise it's not gonna work very well. In these files, it lists all of the airlines, the three digit code, 
or the three digit three character code that is common for the tags the shorter version which is used in scheduling and online systems and then it lists who they are you've got the airplanes which tells you just a list of all the different airplanes that the game can support airports all the different airport codes that can come and go from it as well as some information about the airport you have some local traffic. This particular one has nothing in there, but uh, some of the ones from AT Control Joe and some of the others, they actually put their um, general aviation and local traffic in there. The actual schedule file, which you can see lists the uh, source airport, destination airport, uh, plane type, uh, short hand for the airline, uh, the uh, actual flight number, and then you've got the uh, this is an arrival, so this is the arrival time and then the departure time. But departure is going to be blank, uh, default to 12 a.m. for anything that's not in there. Same with departures, just runs that way. And then the code again. So you're just replacing all that information. Another really important one is going to be the terminal. This tells the game which terminals have which airlines that can come and go from them. So if an airline that you don't have assigned to a terminal comes in, it's not going to work properly. It's going to glitch and it's going to cause some problems. So that is essentially it. It's really not that difficult. It's just a bit tedious and time consuming. So hope that helps clarify any issues. I know I kind of went through this a little quick. That's because I already did the video and I'm just annoyed with myself for breaking it. But feel free to pause, rewind. It's really not difficult. Like I said, it's just tedious and time consuming. I wish they would kind of import it into a better install package, but it is what it is. It works fairly well. Hope you got something out of that and found it interesting. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.